City. Now we're going to a place, uh, Nichols Woodworking, I believe, and they make woody bodies, like the car I'm driving right now. These guys are nationally known, build a really high quality uh, wooden body. And because they deal in old cars, I'm hoping that they'll know about old cars. So we're coming here unannounced, although I called earlier and left a message. We'll see what happens. We'll look at the garage doors open, and there is a Packard. Wow, look at that. That's a uh, that's army woody. They painted those things uh, olive drab. That's very unusual. Well, this could be an interesting twist to the day. He's probably going to look at the wood on this thing and says, who did that? Well, look at this bird's eye. Let's see how much we got here. Oh, it's almost all. Should I critique it? But you've been on the road here with this, so. Yep. I drive, you know, we, we were in rain. We're, we've been in the snow, Colorado. This is always a tough corner to get. Yeah. When you're, when you're doing the wood. Yeah. Because it's got to, got to roll in. Well, you, you can't uh, have been in the woody business as long as I have and not heard of Mike Nichols. Mike Nichols is based in Traverse City. We're in Traverse City, Michigan. And uh, Mike has invited us to tour his facility and his projects. But what we're most interested in are the cars that are lying around outside, barn finds. So I'm following you, man. Here we go. Here we go. Just follow, show us the ugly stuff. OK, we're going to start out. We'll start outside. Um, a friend of mine gave me a, a staff car a while ago. It was a 1942 staff car. Which is that? Which is this car. And the floor was pretty bad. I mean, it's like gone. It's a six cylinder. And along with it, he had this parts car, which is a 48. Which is that? So what I have to do is take the military stuff and the 42 stuff off of this, which is the firewall and the trunk box in the back, and put that on this car. And I haven't... So this is unusual. Bit, and you think of an old Ford having a, a flathead V8. This was This is a six-cylinder. All the, all yeah. the uh, military stuff had a six. No kidding. Huh. They made like 2,300 of these. You know, I mean, that's got to be a rare power plant right there. You know, you, I've been in the business my whole life. And I, yeah, it, it is. I, I don't know where else they used it, in trucks or something. Probably but, trucks, yeah. But uh, all the service stuff had this military six-cylinder in it. So this originally was in this metallic blue. I remember seeing that. Yeah, it was a blue. And look, look at the original paint. I mean, the crayon marks are still on the firewall. <clears throat> this is a curious car. And, you know, it's a car, a 48 Ford, that if you saw it like this, okay, you wouldn't pay much attention to it. But just think, it's a 1948, which means it's 71 years old. And and the original paint on this car was metallic blue. Now, for Ford to have a metallic color, it's kind of unusual. But Ford didn't do a lot of metallic colors. But this is the original paint on the firewall. And look at it. You could shine this up. And these crayon marks here, here, and here, those were put on by a Ford factory worker 71 years ago. So this car was all metallic blue. You can see it here. I guess it was painted light gray or something in the meantime, but you can see it here. And look at it, it's even on the floor. The floors are amazingly solid. They have surface rust, but they're solid floors. Again, for a 71 year old car, it's amazing. So this metallic paint is still shining on the floors, which usually floors are just rotted away. There's nothing left. So he's gonna take this car, which is Ford Motor Company, right before the war and right after the war, were basically the same cars. So this one being a 48, same as 46, 47, that's a 42. So he's taking all the military hardware off this and putting it on here. Uh, there's a couple of small differences with uh, reinforcing lines on the firewall. He's going to fix that. But this will ultimately be a 42 Ford military vehicle because the body on this one is is so far gone. But this, I mean, really, I'd, I'd be surprised if a 25-year-old car would be as sound as this one. This is almost three times as old as that. Just, uh, it, it's, a, it, it's interesting because this was a, uh, a northern car and this was a southern car. So if you live in the north and you're surrounded by cars like this, get in your car and drive south and bring home a car like this. 
and you'll have good bones that you'll be working with for the rest of your project. Oh, you'll love this one. You'll love this. So this is called a buyback car. It's called a buyback car. And uh, they came along when, uh, when the war broke out. All this stuff was just grabbed up by the service. So they said, you can't build any more cars. Everything you have in stock is, is going to be ours if we need it. I can tell this is a buyback car because the inside of the hood and the firewall are a gray, which was a standard Packard color. Yep. I couldn't tell you what the name was, but uh, they just shut the hood and painted everything OD and said it's a staff car. Is that right? And so where did this car come from? Same place I got the other ones. Down in Bath, Michigan. Are these are these low mileage cars or something? They're kind of low mileage cars. You might not want to go in there. Is that Mr. right, Cotter? <laughs> really? Yeah, that's a little nasty in here. <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna look at the mileage to see how many miles are on it. Ninety-nine thousand six hundred forty-one miles. Hmm. So you see the original gray in the door jam here, but then the green out here. And this is a forty-two Packard. Forty-two Packard. Yeah. Hmm. So you have that for what reason? Like, you gonna take part to have military parts on it? No, I, I don't know what yard art. Got yard it. art today. Okay. Then there's another little toy in here. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, look at this. A wood. Wow. This, Was this at Hershey? I took it to Hershey. Yeah. I, uh, I was trying to get 29. I take about 25 for it now. But all the wood's done on it. All wood. Um, Mechanically, it's all there. It's got an engine. It's got. Uh, it's all here. The wood's been just sealed on the outside. It'd make a really nice rat ride for somebody. In other words, the wood's all new, but nothing else has been touched. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And it was a Texas car. So here's another military vehicle, huh? Yeah, this is another 1942. Now, what body is this? This is uh, what they call a war wagon. Mm -hmm. And who, who made the body? So it was a standard two-door sedan, and it was cut off at, behind the front door. Forward is standard 42 Ford, so all the dash and everything is 42. Then it was converted, it was shipped to Middlebury, Indiana, and converted to an ambulance carry-all mm -hmm. for the service. They made less than 100 of these, and there's only one other, uh, one other one that we know of. Okay, so that's the data plate from it. Yeah. So it says here a nomenclature, auxiliary, ambulance, and carry-all, Ford Motor Company, blah, blah, blah. Isn't that interesting? 45 miles an hour, maximum speed. Has this got a six-holder in it? No, it's got a V8. Uh-huh. Uh, originally, this car came from a friend of mine told me he found a, a wagon out in, uh, in a cornfield in Iowa. And he sent me some pictures. And he said the seats run lengthwise. And I said, they never made one. And then I compared. Look at that. I compared this pattern to a photograph in Lauren Sorensen's book, and I said that's what this is. So we went out and got it. Ha! Huh. And this is your car? Yeah. Wow. They stretched the frame 22 inches. Where? Between? Back here. So behind there. So the wheelbase is standard. Standard. They stretched yeah. the frame on the back end 22 inches. The fenders are. They they source they, them out somehow. Well, they came with this pile of junk I got at one time. Uh huh. So it's interesting, it's got just passenger car inner door panels. Yeah. It didn't do any more than it needed to. Right. And uh, my, my dad was in the service, he was in uh, World War II, and he shipped stuff home in boxes exactly like those up there. And uh, I just remade them and had a stencil made. Mine said, uh, his said Navy, but I can't put Navy on an Army truck. When do you see military vehicles like this? This is like the only time in my life I've seen this. You don't. Wow. Originally, it had a. It, it, it had. See, it was blue. Car was blue, and it had these numbers under the hood right here, all hand painted. We put those right back in there. As a forty-two boy. So you brought this to shows and things. Yeah, yeah. I take it to shows. To, I'm surprised like a movie company hasn't gotten in touch with you. Took it to a national military convention down in Cleveland hmm. a couple years ago. So this is standard Woody here. Yeah, this is a standard Woody. Came out of Texas. Mm -hmm. Is that a customer car? No, it's mine. I just got to figure out when I'm going to have time to do it. And a Plymouth Woody. Is that a customer car? No, that's another one of mine. Uh huh. Um, so Plymouth, were they oak bodies? No, they're all white ash. White ash. Okay. Yeah. 
So you're not all for Woody's, you'll do any kind of Woody? Oh yeah, I've done some real custom stuff. Uh -huh. Parts and pieces. So where, is this, like this is a fabrication shop here? Yeah, I kind of use this room for my welding because it's isolated from the woodwork. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be another 42. For me, I've been working on, well, I had, I had one almost, I had one almost all done. But somebody offered me so much money, I said I can build another one. <laughs> That's the way it went. But, uh, so I'm working on another one. Uh -huh. This is the floor pan and wood part, and this is going to be the, the chassis and the front clip. Oh, okay, so these are one unit. These two will go together yeah, yeah. as one. Okay, and it has, looks like a finished car. Is that uh, Washington blue? Uh, Jefferson not... blue? One or the other. Yeah, Four. it's a blue. I can't remember the name. Strata, it's Strata blue. Strata blue, really? It's a 48 color. All right, so this is what ugly Woody's become <laughs> when you send it up here. My goodness, is that pretty. So did, did you restore the body and everything or just the wood? We did everything on this car. Everything. Wow. Uh, it belongs to a fellow named uh, Scott Reed and lives in Brusselton, uh, Australia. So uh, my wife and I, he, well, he bought it at uh, Springfield, Missouri. Mm -hmm. And my wife and I went out and got it. It wasn't, didn't look like this at all. But uh, so Scott bought it out there. My wife and I went out there and picked it up, and then we started doing it, putting Man. it together. Beautiful. And all the wood's new. You fabricated all this wood. All new wood. Man. Now, Iron Mountain, that's where the Woody Ford Woody bodies are built, right? Yeah, that was way up north. And I mean, do you ever get lumber out of there? Did well, I... yeah, there's a story. I was doing a car for Mr. Dingman at one time, and um, I called a place in New Hampshire. I says, I need 200 and some feet of bird's eye. That's oh. where my bird's eye body comes from, New Hampshire. Yeah, so I says, uh, well, get me some. Well, I waited and waited and waited and waited. I says, I can do better than this. So I got on the phone, and there's a place up in Ishpeming that had two and inch. Is that in this country? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's right next to that great university up there. Okay. Anyway, um, so I went up there and got 200 feet. And there's another pile sitting there. I says, I like that stuff, too. It was so, old bird's eye? Yeah. And he says, well, that's instrument grade, and it's going to California. I said, well, it's still sitting there. Did the guy pay for it? No, we're waiting for him to send a check. I said, I'm here. I'm going home with that load. Wow. So I came home with a $7,000 load of birds. I'm able to do one car. To do one car. You had a lot left over. You could do another car, I'm sure. Nope. I only had a few pieces left no when I was kidding. done. By the time I got done, Jeez. it was all gone. So, okay, so here's, here's finger joints. This is an extension extension of that and then the other half of this is on the door oh yeah oh okay so it mates it okay, yeah so it. when yeah. it's done it looks like like that so what does a finger joint machine look like uh, let's see that's oh, over here almost all set up how do you match now what's the next step to match those or it's the same thing no, you can't run the same piece and have them go together. They'll be offset. Right. So you have to readjust that. So you, you go like up and down a quarter Yeah, minute, up and down. Minute. See, we're, we're, uh, we're right, that's where it was cut. The yep. next one's going to be right there. Got it. Isn't that something? And if it's really too tight, I'll add a little shim under the second uh, run. Otherwise, I'll never get it together. i got to have glue clearance in there. And so you have that much clearance, the veneer. <laughs> yeah, so it makes one set of teeth just a little bit narrower. So you cut the curve pieces and then finger joint them, or do you finger joint them and then cut them into curves? It'll be two blocks together on an angle, and then when they come together, you, you cut See, the See, I've only had this on my mind since I was 15 years old, so you're answering a lot of questions. Ah, look so at that. So we had, we had that line, and this one was over, probably over there. So you, you're finger jointing blocks and then form it into the piece. Got yeah. it. So this, this has been your career. Yeah. Your lifelong career. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> <laughs> so how many woodies have you built, you figure? Uh, most of them are on this wall back here. Uh, we're up to 100 and something. Oh, look at that. Uh, <laughs> Where's number one? I don't know. It was, I probably started here and went that way and then went back up. Uh, we got 29s, we got Sportsman's, we got 37s, we got 37 Packard. Jeez. Um, 
42 Army wagon up there. Uh, here's 338s here in a row we did. Here's a couple 50s. Uh, you probably know Dick LaHaye. Oh yeah. <laughs> we, did, we did his car a long time ago. Uh, some 47s, some 46s, some 34s. It's... And you had other parts cars out the back door here? Oh yeah, yeah, we got junk all over the place. <laughs> Uh, this is just stuff that's accumulated over the years. Uh, I'd probably start cleaning it up someday. Another 48 wagon that could be saved. I've got enough stuff around here to do that. So this could be saved? This could be saved. Uh, and you, like the hardware, you have hardware if it's missing. I, well, it came with that semi-truck I felt full of stuff. And you still have the truck full? Yeah, it's all in the building back here. Wow. So, uh, you know, a four-door floor would make this uh, pretty good, and you can get dash stuff. And... Mm -hmm. what, now that's a Chevy, you said? Yeah, it's a 29 Chevy truck. And that could be made into a woody... Ah, you could. We were thinking we'd make a... Uh, put the cab on there and put a big wine barrel on the back, you know, and fill it. And we'd yep, just go yep. down the road and just sip along as we go, you know? <laughs> so is, is that 53-foot truck contents are in this building? Yeah. But every everybody's got a building like this somewhere. Yep. So we got hoods, fenders. Uh, here's a woody fender here. Here's a yeah, I know the dashes, uh, steering columns up there, dashes. Uh, you don't advertise them. It's just when somebody contacts you, you're... Well, I dig into them when I need something. But yep, yep. a lot of people know I have stuff. But it's... Do you do body work as well? or you I do my own. I do what I have to do. But the, the car going to Australia... We did. You, did. you did the body work? Did you do the paint? Yeah. Holy mackerel. You got a paint booth here. Oh, kind of one. Yeah. No, we don't have a paint booth. Wow. That's, that's high tech. Yep. We got a clean room that we paint in. So. Yep. So this is kind of all woody stuff right in here. Now yep. the big part, you can buy the handle, but you need this part. Yep. yep. So you can convert a, a, a reproduction handle to this if you have that. Mm -hmm. uh, ashtrays, lots of ashtrays, radios. Yeah. Well, this is pretty cool. Well, I've met the legend, the guy I've been reading about for 30 years, 35 years. Wow. Thanks for showing us around here. Oh, you're welcome. It's just amazing. Just, it just happens to be good luck that we were here in Traverse City. And I, That's right. There's a guy here. Yeah, there's a guy here. Well, that was a pleasant experience. I heard about Mike Nichols for a long time, being in the Woody world, and he's one of the renowned Woody bodybuilders. And we're in Traverse City. Let's go visit him. And he said, yeah, come on in. And he has Woody's from junk in the backyard, parts cars, to cars that can be restored, to cars under restoration, to concourse cars, all in, in one piece of property, outside and inside his building. It was a great experience, met he and his wife. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, because I got to learn about woodworking that I've been wondering my whole life, finger joints, whatever. Uh, I'm glad you could come along for the ride. <laughs> That ain't no six cylinder. What nice work, man. So we put a, we put a three, 350 Chevy engine in this one with a- Can uh, you pop the hood? Is that possible? Uh, yeah. Nice work, man. And that's just a crate motor, just a stock? Yeah, it's stock 350. Yep.